Do we ram Shambo for this uh, intro? <laughs> I don't know. It's been so long since we've done one of these that I think maybe it's a... Uh, I mean, I think we just started it. Yeah, well, we've been on a little break from hiatus. You've been on vacation. Everything's been pretty busy. It has been insane. I feel I feel like it's been... I can't... Like, it's so weird to be out of the like routine of recording a podcast and we're totally out of that routine yeah and, and it's funny because like I, th- I was like you know what like we've uh we've recorded a lot let's just kind of chill for a little while and then we'll come back and we'll come back strong but it's it seems like it's really hard to come back now to like this is difficult like but- it is. It well, is a. It is a weird like uh, reboot. Uh, but I tell you, I feel like there's a lot of cool things that we're doing soon. Um, with uh, with guests that we've got coming up, um, I know we're gonna have some pretty interesting people on in the next couple weeks. Yeah. Yeah, we you got like all... that teaser. <laughs> I noticed it. I know. I know. And we've actually been still working. We just haven't been recording anything. Yeah. So, I think when we left off, so I think it's it's important to maybe just reset and say that it's just Jordan and I today. Austin is in San Antonio with his bird dog, Max. Yes. Austin, or Jordan is in right here. And Cameron is in Arkansas. Uh, somewhere like that. Somewhere in the land of Bill Clinton. Shooting at yippee dogs. Yeah, I would love to just say that he was shooting dogs and just leave it at that, but then people would be like, oh my god, he's shooting dogs? I'd be like, yeah, it's Cameron. Not it's, not the first time. <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time. But uh, no, he's shooting coyotes, hunting coyotes in, in Arkansas, which is pretty cool, but you and I are here. Eating food and celebrating Memorial Day. Yeah, I'm so full right now. I'm sure you can hear it in our voices that a nap is inevitable. Yeah. Nothing like a good Memorial Day party at the house with fajitas. Beer. And beer. And a swimming pool. And dogs. (laughs) America. Hell yeah. So, uh, I think we have not had a podcast about the successful turkey hunt that you went on at Hagerman a couple weeks ago. We have talked about you preparing for it, I feel like, on every podcast for the last, what, six, seven months. <laughs> but uh, tell us about the, uh, the hunt. Man, you know, it was... Uh it was a good time, you know. We, uh, I say we. I by myself went it was up. A solo and, hunt. Yeah, I went went up. Uh, stayed in a place called uh, Paradise on Texoma. Was that like a it campsite? Was, or? Just a little campsite, you yeah. know. And pitched my tent up and did all that, and you know, went out the first day, and you know, of course, I planned everything out. I scouted. Scouted a lot with Onyx Maps. Uh, found some fields I thought would be fantastic. And uh, then I uh, got out there, of course. And the first morning I was like, you know, I've always been a person that's like hunting turkey. You don't really have to be out there super early. You're uh, very much in the mindset that I'm... I'm like, before dark is not the best way to go, huh? So, I was using the whole, like, well, you know, I'll, I mean, getting out there before daylight and stuff like that, that's fine. But, like, right at daylight is when they'll start coming down from the roost. Mm-hmm. And they'll start moving, like, around daylight. But daylight has to come around. So, you have enough time to get out. Like, you just need to have enough time to get where you want to go yep. to start. And... You know, 
set up and setting up for a turkey isn't that big of a deal like you put a couple decoys out and yeah as long as you have a plan it's not a big deal so i was in the mindset of you know i'll just i'll just wake up uh around sunlight get over to the you know to Hagerman and get to my spot and get out there not a big deal well the one thing that me and kind of had a brain fart on was the fact that I'm going to be hunting on public land with a bunch of other people Mm -hmm. you know people drew for this so of course they're going to be out there on the same the only weekend that you can hunt and so I knew there were some other guys at the same place I was camping at that were turkey hunters. And uh, as I'm sleeping there, you know, I, I always wake up pretty early anyway. So I was like kind of drifting in between sleep and going in and out of waking up and sleep. And all of a sudden I start hearing all these trucks starting up and driving out. And I'm like, oh, crap, dude. Like I'm behind. I'm, behind, yeah. and I'm, I'm already behind the game. So like I jumped up, loaded everything up got out there uh ran out there and i looked at the sign-in book because they have a sign-in book at the headquarters and it was like already filled out like people are like most of the hunters were already out in the field yeah so i got to where i wanted to hunt and of course there's already trucks at the trailhead and talked to an old boy that was getting ready and uh he was saying he was going in deep and i was planning on not going in very deep but um i was sort of hiking out and the f- first place that i wanted already had hunters in it of course of course so they didn't divide you guys up into like units or nope, anything you, it was just a free for all huh they were uh, we had talked to nobody like you go in you sign in a, in a book that says i'm hunting this field or you know this unit and that's it like you don't have to say like what field you're in or it's just i'm in this unit and most of the units were open to hunting except for like one okay so and they told you that in the email and so i decided that i was like you know what i'm just gonna i'm gonna go in deep i'm just gonna walk into this place start walking and just i'm gonna i'm gonna do some crow calls i'm gonna just do some locators and try to figure out where they're at and at least I'd at least figure out boots on the ground, yeah. what's going on. So I uh, got out there and rum, roamed around, you know, found a bunch of cool stuff. I mean, that, that place is really cool. Yeah. Bunch of hogs. Um, saw a bunch of coyotes. Yeah. Running around. You saw a bunch of hogs? Uh, I saw a bunch of sign. sign. Yeah. Sign. Um. I mean, it was every, like, yeah. I'm really surprised I didn't see hogs because yeah. it was so... There was so much of it. And, you know, talking to a bunch of people lately, uh, they were saying that about Hagerman is the the hogs have really put a damper on uh, the deer population stuff yeah. there. They made the deer hunt really bad. Pushed them off and everything. And I, and I really was like, oh, yeah, you hear that everywhere you go. Yeah. Like, that's Texas. Like, everyone's like, oh, well, you know deer aren't around anymore because the hogs but like that place now that i've been out there and on the ground like there's a shit ton of hog yeah like just prints and sign and wallers and all kinds of stuff all over that place yeah so then i saw a bunch of coyotes during the day like i mean they were out you know probably about 10 o'clock in the or 10 o'clock in the morning running around so first spot i picked wasn't very good you know i walked all the way into the end of the property and ran the line of the property up and got kind of back over in a spot where like you couldn't there's no one else around me yeah you're kind of isolated and i thought well you know maybe some people will scare some stuff there walking past you kind of and pushing it back towards you or shooting you know in the yeah. front in the front of the, the trail i was on and uh didn't see anything didn't see anything so started walking out and uh decided to go have lunch and went and had lunch and was talking to a guy and uh met up with two members of bha out there awesome two guys we saw he was uh they were out at the uh the live podcast that we did at, oh uh, really 
legal. Badass. So they were actually out there too, and one of them got a big old tom, and they were actually in my first pick spot. Uh, they were they were the two. Well, that's that that's kind of a there. cool thing to have, like where you're like, all right, I want to hunt there, and then you just kind of natural <laughs> public land of like somebody is in your spot, but and then for that spot to be successful. Yeah, no, it was really successful cool. because, uh, you know, I'll get to how successful it was, but they shot a Tom out there and he was going back in and, um, I still need to do some stuff. Like I got in real late on Thursday night, so I need to go pay for my spot and all that to yeah. the front desk. So I went into my campsite and took a nap, did all the stuff, went back out again kind of walked around for a little bit and still didn't see like very much found a bunch of cool spots yeah but nothing that was really producing or you know most of them had guys in them so then the first day that was about the extent of it was just exploring just and trying to figure it out the didn't, the didn't really see anything didn't hear anything you know locator calls they weren't really talking um called Grinch and was talking to him about you know, trying to bounce ideas off him, what he thought. And we're both talking about how every time we go out that, you know, people say, oh, you can locate, her, locate them, you know, crow calls and yeah. gobbles and stuff like that. and uh, But none of it was successful. So I decided that there was a, a first field that during the afternoon I went and sat in. And that was actually pretty close to the trucks. That I ignored because it was so close. Uh, and it didn't really look all that great, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to go sit in this field. This I'm is day two? Uh, yeah, coming coming over to day two. This uh, During the night, I was, I was making a plan. was like that first field. So I wake up early, go to that first field, hit it, stay it strong because there was some weather coming in. Yeah. And uh, I was like, and it was bad enough weather that there was supposed to be a hail oh. and stuff like that. So I was like, I'm not sticking out through that. No. We'll, we'll make we'll make sure to hunt pretty hard the first thing in the morning. So I went uh, out to that field that I already set in. Didn't really see a whole lot. Uh, changed up my spot from what I set in the afternoon the day before. And uh, sat there and I you know, met up with the guys. They were back out from BHA. Uh, there's two guys hunting together one of them shot a tom the first day and the other one was going after uh his tom uh on saturday and we were talking and we we're like yeah we need to be out of here by noon because the weather's coming in around like 11 yeah but it would should hit haggerman around like 11 30 maybe close to closer to 11 so, yeah. so we we at least had a a game plan of when to when to leave because you know, well, at least we'd know when someone was about to move. And, um, <clears throat> went and set up, put my, my decoys out, and, uh, sat there. And I decided actually to, uh, change calls as much as I want to pretend that I'm an awesome turkey collar. Turkey collar with the diaphragm call. I decided to bust out the old box call. Nothing wrong and, with that. Uh, you know, I, th I think I actually. I do feel like I'm way better with box call. Yeah. But most people say box calls are way easier, but I definitely had a, a little more, uh, a better cadence to my. Yeah. I mean, it's obviously, I think I feel like you obviously, you have a lot more control with the box call um, than you do with your mouth call. I mean, until you get to a point where you're like, you know, a world champion turkey caller and, or just a really good mouth caller with a, a diaphragm. But I think the, the box is the way to go. I just think, know? yeah, I mean, like, I'm more of a fan of box, and I don't think it's that bad that I'm not really great with my mouth. Mm -mm. <laughs> I don't think so either. I agree. It's, if you're going to have to pick one of the two, I'd pick the box. Mm -hmm. Always. Always pick the box. I, I can work a box pretty well. Yeah. But, <laughs> so, uh. I sat out there for most of the morning, and uh you know i'd call a little bit and wait and, and what was your uh what was your calling strategy what was kind of just like would you go every 10 minutes or every five minutes or 
So I change it up a lot. Uh, and I use a lot of um, like purrs and clucks. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just basic like feeding, a, walking through the walking through the yeah. woods type. No, like blowing it up like crazy. Like yeah, and and, and then uh, every maybe about like every uh, like thirty to forty minutes, like I would just lay on it. Yeah, just give a nice like little sequence. Get, yeah, let or whatever. let them know I'm there. Yeah, and then and then randomly like every like ten minutes, maybe longer. Depending, I would just kind of give a little, you know, like sitting here, you know, yeah. feeding through the woods type thing, you know. And I had a, a hen and a Jake decoy laying out in front of me. So are you in a bunch of woods? Or are you like overlooking a field? I was overlooking a field. I decided back to Back up in the woods. Yeah, and, and I was in the woods, okay. laid back against a tree. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of putting your back to a tree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Agreed. Get like breaks up that silhouette. You know, can't gives you something you to know. hide behind and lean it's, against. It's more comfortable too. Exactly. And uh, I had uh, I most of the day was watching the you know the storm roll in. I could see it over the trees, and it was getting darker and darker Whoa. and stuff rolling in. I'm like, man. Was it just super windy? You know, there wasn't a lot of wind. No, actually, like That's it was good. pretty calm. It was like one of those calm with storms. Yeah. And. uh so, I was sitting there, and you know, I was I was in that mindset of, you know, I'm pretty much almost about to be done. You know, like there, you know, the storm's coming in. There's not much. Uh, there's not much uh, left in this hunt. Yeah. And uh, about that time, you know, I was like, you know, I'm just gonna give us a couple ripping calls and. You know, just give it the last. If it doesn't work, whatever. So I give some calls and I'm starting moving a lot more and, you know, packing up some of my stuff I had yeah. laying around me and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And out of the corner of my eye, there was like a, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, like a outcrop of brush to my right. And I couldn't really see to the right all that good. Yeah. I mean, I could see the field, well enough, but not but the, the, the line coming yeah. down the brush line of the field. And uh, the way I was sitting, I was planning on the to the right probably wouldn't be my best bet because I was at the front of the trail. Yeah. And I figured they'd come to the, from the left because it was more, that's the way the field went mm -hmm. to the thicker woods and the roost that I thought they were in. We're to my left, but um, next thing I know, this uh, full strut turkey comes out from the right, from that, out of the corner of my eye, and I just freeze. Like, I'm just pack, packing up go. all my stuff. Like, I was already, almost yeah. gave up, and uh, he uh, came in, you know, just full strut, and he was probably only like 10 yards away from me. Holy shit. And uh, he came walking in from the right, kind of doing his little dance of, you know, like facing Here's one way. way of Where you at, girl? Get, get, yeah, get, give him the, 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 the side look and, yeah. and kind of coming on to him a little bit more yeah. and coming straight for my, my Jake decoy, like looking at, yeah. you know, looking for the fight. And uh, so I'm sitting there, I'm trying to judge him, you know, and whatever, and sitting there and you know he was just puffed like a little butterball yeah like just puffed up to all get out and you know so i'm sitting there and he gave me he he was giving me the back of his fan the whole time yeah. so i was like i had plenty of time i i had a a uh um, tripod that i got set up mm -hmm. so i got all comfortable with my shot i had my shotgun and he eventually uh got close enough to my decoys where he was like wait a second something's not uh, right and he poked his head up and man i just got him right in the head yeah right above his fan in fact the the mount that i'm doing you can kind of see where some of my stray pellets yeah. went through his fan yeah 
but uh, peppered him from the behind. My I got him, and then um, did he, he just flop or? Oh, yeah, he just flopped down. He was yeah. it was done. That's good. And uh, you know, I've, I know we talked about getting out on film and stuff like that. I really wanted to, but I took none of my camera gear out because it was supposed to just yeah. unleash. So I was like, I'm. Uh. Uh-uh. You know. That's that thing. That's the. That's uh. Every single time I'm in the field. And I'm like, ah, I'm going to leave this here, here, because it's going to rain, or I get a little, you know, too lazy and don't want to carry it out there. Then it that's when it happens. Man. Every time. You know, and I'm okay with that. Yeah. I mean, I mean that was like the uh, the doe that I killed this year. I was trying to get on camera desperately, and um, like the last day of the last time I was going to be able to to hunt on a, on a spot that I, I know I would be able to connect on, and... I was just like, I got her, and she moved. I got, I had her on camera. Everything was perfect. And then, you know, she they kind of spooked off a little bit and moved. And I was like, all right, I'm not even going to – I'm not I'm not taking the extra second to, to readjust here. I'm just going to freeze, stand there, and then as soon as she stops, I'm going to put an arrow in her. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it sucks, but uh, yeah, I got to put, put meat in my freezer. Yeah, we're hunters first. I mean – I got I to gotta have some neck tacos. Oh, I gotta yeah. have some shanks, and I need some, I need some roasts. I'm just, it sucks having just one deer though, because she's basically gone. I just have like a very little amount left, and we still got a long way to deer season. Yeah, what? Well, it's depressing the way you said that. <laughs> it is depressing, but I looked it up. It's 128 days, or it was 128 days. Uh, the last time I looked, which is probably couple days ago so we're we're getting close we're like probably around 120 days as of the day that this is being recorded you know probably more like 115 110 by the time this comes out when well, you've already gone and checked trail cams and kind of got a couple ideas like yeah, you kind of did a, a pre 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 scout I have done a pre pre scout and uh, but I do want to I've got more questions about your turkey hunt. <laughs> so you uh, you made the shot, flopped down, and just away you went. And anything like uh, how did it go? Just as far as like getting out, did you have to deal with a bunch of weather? Or? I haven't even so, really heard the story in, in real life. This isn't even like you know podcast story. I didn't really even catch this because yeah, I didn't I tell I you until. EarthX this that weekend that that was going on so we didn't get a really a chance to talk and then I was gone like in Paris for two weeks and then I've been back for like a week and um so I haven't even heard kind of like what happened did you like did you get out before the hell hell hit or so I walked out and the guys in the second like there's two fields where I was at I was in the first field and the other guys from BHA were in the second field and I heard them shoot earlier and then i guess after i shot they decided it was definitely me and they decided to move at that point and they walked out and that old boy got a big old rope dragger son of a gun tom like mine was like nothing like i mean i had a jake you know it was and i and i chose you know i wanted the meat and you know i i was definitely hoping for a rope dragger but you know with the weather coming in and from as much as i saw and you know i've never really been that big of a turkey hunter and a lot of people probably will tell you it's the same thing uh at least with the way i felt about it It was like when you first see your first big old buck yeah but it's only an eight point oh yeah you know like but the first time you see that buck coming in it might as you, well you, be a yeah yeah it might as well be like elk. A, yeah <laughs> you know? I mean it, it, and and that thing came in puffed up and Dude. looking for a fight and like it, you know you see that stuff in on TV and yeah in videos and you know I never like I've always just seen turkeys walking through yeah like, you're just like oh there's you know, a turkey like, I'd be deer hunting and yeah. it mm-hmm. happens to be lined up with fall you know deer and you know, turkey's still running through, and you're just yeah. seeing them like, oh, there it is. Okay. It's not the... You know, but shooting turkeys and being a turkey hunter, like, this is one of the first times I've actually 
for sure gone out for a turkey full heartedly. Yeah. And uh and connected. And, oh yeah. Yeah, I mean and, but it, I mean it's just very cool. Like I've had I've gone out hurting turkeys before, never connected on one yet, but um just to like call with them and have that you know to know they're close to you is it's just really cool for that. Like cuz a lot of times when you're deer hunting you you may be 5 yards from a deer and have no clue they're there. Um but well and, and calling is know. calling is such a like to me like I love to call. Yeah. And Grinch makes fun of me all the time for it and he uh you know sometimes comments that you know I might want to call too much but there is a thing where especially with turkey i i feel that sometimes you can call too much sometimes you're not calling enough yeah there's you know and 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 i was sitting there thinking you know i had a plan i I made myself like i was even looking at my watch like you know don't call within like 10 to 15 minutes like you have to have that much spread And, and you know i was getting at that point like you know i set up for a good while and i was really like i just wanted to make it happen yeah you know like and it's hard to like not the only thing you can do is call yeah dude. you know I mean, what i mean like that you're just sitting there either you know luck you picked right and luck's gonna be on your side or you're gonna call one in yeah or I mean, whatever and, and you know like you're sitting there calling and you're hearing no response did you hear i heard a few gobbles uh, but a lot of the gobbles I heard, there was I knew there was already hunters in that area. So you're like, that's a hunter. And yeah, well, I don't know if it was a hunter or not, but you were gonna they're, go chasing off. Yeah, after I'm not gonna go chasing after it. Like that's the thing I don't understand about like why they wouldn't like put you in a dr- a unit because I feel like people would like that's a wise move on your part to not be like, well, I'm going off half like half cocked into this thing and walk into a setup and get some you know shot in here but i feel like that would be something that you would have you would have people set in their unit and you were just like here's your unit you don't go out of your unit and because that was the way the old speed river bottom was like i drew a unit i could go anywhere in that unit i wanted because i was the only person in that unit yeah but how many tags did they 36 how many units are there 38, I think, 37, like something right around that, 36, 37, 38 units. And they had about just about that many people there. Um, and it just was, it was nice because I had a whole area to myself and I could just be like, okay, I'm going to move around or um, I knew where my boundaries were. And uh, it was just, it was nice to have a bigger area to kind of go, okay, I'm going to go after something, you know. Um, I mean, I wasn't turkey hunting, but I would I imagine in a situation like that, you would have been able to go, okay, well, that's, I can go that way for at least, you know, some defined distance and then see if I can't get closer or set up and call them in or into my unit. One thing I was really happy of, and this was actually the BHA guys, so I don't know if it's just they know the uh, the rules of public land hunting, but like, I went through, and, you know, I said the the second field was where I wanted to hunt. So I flashed the field with my flashlight and gave a couple, actually, my headlamp, because I have a really bright headlamp. I had the old cover with one hand and then, you know, give a couple blinks with my headlamp. And they blinked me back to let me know that, hey, we're in here. Like, they knew that that's what I was after. And, um made it super easy to find where not to go at yeah. least which unfortunately <laughs> yeah but i mean i think like you, that's just the way it goes you know with public land um people walk up on you people mess your setup up they just it's a it's a, you're, you're dealing with people as much as you are animals well, i was just really glad that one of those guys pulled a big old rope dragging tom out of there because yeah. like I mean, they pulled two toms out of there, and both of them were fantastic birds. Yeah. You know, like I had the, like the beard on mine was just pathetic. Like, yeah, I, yeah but I mean, it, I don't even think it reached an inch. But, but you got a, you got a, you got a bird, and right. But I mean, like the field I wanted produced two 
big turkeys. big old toms yeah. and and i was really super impressed and i was like man like so like you were saying earlier like at least made me happy that the my my actual pick yeah was correct like i i picked yeah i picked a good spot i just didn't wake up early enough what about that spot kind of like um when you saw it you were just like yeah this is good what was the what was it about that field that said yeah this is where i want to go so the where i was at there was a little like creek that runs from texoma off and there's a couple ponds yeah and i knew where they were roosting up okay and that field the way it was set up and where it was at was a good like midpoint between a where they would go for food and still be st- close to some water sources. Okay. Uh, the first field. How did you know where they were roosting? Just you found like. Um, talking to people. Yeah. So, a couple of the guys I talked to that had been out there before said that they've seen roost right on that uh, creek line. And, okay. Uh, and then Makes when I was sense. walking around, I found a couple spots that looked like. They've been roosting there recently. Yeah. Maybe not right then and there, but, but some turkey feathers and turkey shit and yeah. that kind of thing underneath a tree. Yeah. Normally a pretty good indication of a That's roost. Absolutely a good indication. So, uh, I, of course, marked it for next year, hopefully, and I know. I I know now to get up earlier and know exactly where I'm going. Yeah, it's all about it. It's it's a it's a process of learning and just kind of going. Oh well, I thought I could get up, and now I'm gonna get up a little earlier, and I'm gonna go after it. You know. Well, and most places we go, like I mean, even we've been beat to some of our spots, like duck hunting and stuff like that. But like, normally you get beat in like your second spot you get because. Yeah. Not a lot of people only use two public people land. There. Yeah. You know, like. Yeah. So. You and the other guy, and they got to your spot first. Well, uh, cool. I go to this other spot. Yeah, and, and you know that's, and all, and a lot of the times, like both spots are just equally as good. There's just one that's further yeah. away, and you're like, I don't want to walk One's all the way over there. Easier to get to, yeah. And, uh, you know, this time, you know, I had the mindset going out there, which you know <clears> I should have been a little more. You know, I, sh- I should have known better. Yeah. Is what I'm saying. Like, I, I knew it was going to be that way because, I mean, you think, think of it common sense wise, you know, like, yeah. but, you know, when you got a brain thing, you know, sometimes it, it eludes happens. you. It happens. It happens. But, well, that's cool. So, what do you plan on? Uh, so, you, you, you took your turkey home. Um, what are you planning on uh, making out of it? So, we've. Uh, have you made anything out of it yet, or just? No, we haven't yet, just, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, like, like I said, you know, like lately we've been, everybody's been real busy, and you know, me and me and the family have been running around. You know, it seems like, especially this time of year, you know, school's wrapping up. So, yeah. uh, you know, I have a young kid, so we're getting ready for her to get out of school, and people in the family getting married, have a wedding to go. You know, there's yeah. just so much stuff going on. It's and, insanity. And then. Uh, the um, you know other summer activities you know that your fishing's going up and all that stuff so just haven't had a chance to really make something that's worth yeah a, a good turkey like that so but uh planning on doing some uh schnitzel out of a little bit of Ugh, the breast that sounds so good and then uh how much uh like just how much meat did you get off of your bird Man, he, like, way bigger than my fist. Yeah. Of each side of a breast, for sure. That's good. Um, and then, uh, I mean, we took every bit of it, wings. Yeah. I plucked it completely down, skin on, you know, it took a long time. We did it, you know, uh, we pretty much got everything filled, plucked, and gutted and all that stuff out there. And you were asking about the weather, so I got all that in the cooler. And then as soon as I got in my truck, I started driving back, and it started hailing. Like, I literally uh. got to the truck, and weather came in, 
And unfortunately, it wasn't as bad. Like I, I probably could have stuck it out. Yeah, it was just because it was like a little, little, little pea-sized hail, yeah. hail, and and then rained really bad for a little bit. And you know, I nowadays I wear nothing but waterproof yeah. camo, especially at, like this time of the year. All oh, all my gear yeah. right now is is lightweight, waterproof yeah. gear, and. Uh, for that, for the reason of you know, in Texas, we can go <laughs> ten years without rain, and then all of a sudden we can go through like a flood that's you know. It won't stop raining it. for months. Yeah. Yeah. And so, but and we got we got a pretty good amount of meat. My daughter, uh, I, I saved the drums for her. She really likes drumsticks and. Awesome. So we're gonna turkey smoke legs. some of those. Yeah, some turkey leg and. Uh, we also want to do a stuffed breast. So one side of the breast, we're going to do stuff. One side, we're going to do schnitzel. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a lot more meat on turkey than you actually think there is. Anything, I mean, yeah. So I'm excited to uh, I'm excited to hear about that. That's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll have some time soon. But like I said, for a while we're going to be running. Oh yeah, you. I mean, it's it's incredible the schedule that exists between all four of us right now. Just for trying to get everybody together, even. To, to go fish has been yeah. a struggle, um, you know, so it's been crazy. So speaking of craziness, we uh, we need to get out and fish. I've been doing a lot of fishing lately, and I have, well, I mean... Amongst world travels and whatnot, but I've been trying to get out to the little creeks and and whatnot around here, but I feel like everything has made its escape out of the creeks. I say that, but I've caught a couple crappie, and I caught one last night doing some night fishing, um, but he was like an inch, he was like two inches long, so I had to throw him back, but... um, my buddy Nathan and I went out and caught a couple crappie out of the kayaks the other day. Um, and we posted those pictures on Instagram. But it's been crazy trying to get everybody together. So, But uh, I'll tell you, I, you know, traveling around as much as I have and gotten to see some cool things of late. Went to Paris with the wife for two weeks and uh went to a got to see some pretty cool things one of the one of the cool things that i saw there was a uh i i just i don't know why i googled it but like hunting in in paris or hunting in france are quite cool museums to go to and um one of the museums was the the museum of of chase or, or the museum of hunting and, and nature in paris and it was really cool to kind of see all the uh the cool things that they had there. They had a trophy room that had everything from, um, you know, white-tailed deer to elk to mule deer to... It had a really cool full-size, you know, uh, sh- like cheetah, two cheetahs, a male and a female, um, polar bear, black bear. Uh, they had every single... Basically, all the major big game animals that you can hunt in the world were somewhere on that wall um guns from just old antique muskets really ornate type things um which is cool a whole bunch of art about hunting um they had a they had these exhibits where uh you kind of it was like a i mean it's kind of hard to explain but i guess like a a, like a bureau or a desk and you kind of go up to it and had these like goggle type things you could look into and it would show you like a a moving picture of like the natural like the natural way that the animals would live in a field which is kind of I, I don't know it was kind of weird for that perspective of it but um they would have everything from a cast footprint to scat to hair to um just all kinds of information about different animals so like um they had uh wolves they had pigs, so Sue Scraffa, which I was like, I walked up to the, I kind of walked around the corner and there was this like little 
desk bureau thing and it was like Sue Scroff and I was like, oh, that's about pigs. I know what that is. Um, but like trying to, you know, like these, uh, you know, uh, Latin nomenclature for these animals was, was kind of cool to see. And uh, that was pretty fun. Uh, I think the best thing that I had, I saw when I was in Paris was, uh, uh, or in France was like the Normandy. Went up to Normandy, saw Omaha Beach, saw Utah Beach, saw Pointe de Hoc, uh, and just kind of what those people went through. Kind of being in a, it's kind of always appreciating it, but you just, I just, it's really hard to kind of understand and kind of, kind of see spatially and like what they went through and, and kind of walking in the footsteps of those people and just kind of being like, wow, this is where this took place. Like this is, this is where this was, you know, and uh, it was really kind of cool. Uh, was, to see. Was it 9,000? I mean... Uh, I think like 9,000, uh, yeah, something like that. In the American Cemetery, they had like 9,000 Americans there, um, which was really kind of cool. And I'll tell you, the biggest thing about that was just the, um, you know, you, you go to Fer to France, and I'm, I'm in, in Paris, and you know, you're just kind of like, America doesn't exist in Paris, right? That just... just Nobody, I mean, every, most people speak English, but um, you would just, there's no, like, you could easily just kind of forget about the country um, of America when you were in Paris. But you leave Paris and you go up to Normandy um, and you go into these little French villages that look exactly the same way they did when World War II was going on. Um, and American flags are everywhere. Like, just everywhere american flag i mean just in people's homes and businesses just every it, it's like almost it, it's like there are more american flags right in that little area than there are on my street today you know and Which it's is really pathetic Day. but it the is, fact that like those guys like directly were you know affected by our soldiers directly oh yeah you i know, mean like, it's it's just very cool to see that you know, they, they call Utah Beach, Utah Beach. They call Omaha Beach, Omaha Beach. It's not, well, that's some French name for a beach, right? No, that's Omaha Beach. Like, the street signs, the signs, everything is that. Um, and it's just very cool to see that whole area of France um, and just the respect that they give uh, to the United States and, and to Britain and to Canada and to... You know, um, obviously, all of the countries that helped them out through, like, Juno and Sword and Gold Beaches and things like that farther up north. But, um, you know, obviously, we just went to the Omaha and Utah and went to Pointe de Hoc. Pointe de Hoc is pretty cool. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a, a, a like, a, it's a point that sticks out kind of, um, kind of like, not, not really necessarily a peninsula, but just a point that kind of comes out of the French coast. Um, that sits between Utah and Omaha Beach. Um, it's about 11 or 12 miles away from each of one of those beaches. And that was a place for heavy Nazi artillery that they would shell both of those beaches on to help protect the Atlantic Wall. Um, and just to kind of be at that place where these, these guys parachuted in, uh, dropped in on boats, and they would come in up off the, the bot uh, out of the sea and literally shoot a rocket propelled grappling hook up to 90 feet of sheer faced cliffs and climb up them um, and did it while being fired on by machine guns and you know variety of different weapons um, and just the craziness of the story that they were they were really dropped where they were supposed to come on they were really dropped I think three miles to um, the north and then had to come up the beach to where they needed to come, you know, come around and up the beach. And um, they did that. And just to kind of just to kind of appreciate that it wasn't a, you know, this wasn't a just a, hey, we overtook your town. This was we come up, we came out of the water upon a heavily fortified position and just beat you. And just took, we invaded a continent from the water, uh, which is really just some. It just doesn't that just doesn't occur. And just how, how like 
hard that is to well, do. Well, normally when you hold the higher ground too, is yeah, you're you, not. You're, you have the advantage. You, you have, you're gonna you're gonna be able to protect, um, you know, and just just the fact that they, um, so y- you go there. So Pond Hawk has you know a museum and a big like you kind of walk from a parking lot out to the to the point of the beach where all of the artillery was stationed and. Um, you know, the, the Nazis didn't even get everything set up they wanted to get set up. They had three, I think two of the five large artillery guns that they wanted up um, before we, they in, before the United States invaded. Um, and just the fact that the, the United States, I mean, the bombing craters that still exist today that are just filled with grass, but um, that are 20 feet deep, you know, just just huge. And you're just like, what? That is a that is a big bomb that's going off, and just um, like to make a hole that big in the ground, and and to kind of put yourself. I mean, I kind of it's weird to say this, but to put yourself in the perspective of a Nazi soldier sitting in that while that's going off, just that kind of a thought of like, can you imagine what it must have felt like to be on that beach when it's just being bombarded, um, and just the. Uh, just the chaos that surrounds it all, right, uh, was was super, was something that struck me that I was just like, this just had to be complete chaos. And for uh, a bunch of Americans to scale a 90-foot cliff um, while being fired at with machine guns and people cutting ropes and people falling and then just the next guy just firing up and going after it, for them to take that was pretty impressive. And... Um, the other thing is, is that so you go. There's all these bunkers, right? So all of these bunkers still exist, um, and you can go in. Um, they've they've maintained them very well, um, um, you know. And I'm walking through, and I look, and lo and behold, what do I see? Is a one of those everybody's seen it Texas state plaques historical markers inside of a Nazi bunker inside of Germany, inside of France, um, because the guy who led the assault on Pont Hawk was a Texan, and in '89, the state of Texas gave the French a historical landmark placard. Do you remember what the number I, is? Because every historical Texas landmark. I don't remember the number, but it was a. Uh, it was. I've got a picture of it, and I can okay. post the picture of it. Yeah. Um. But uh, it was a. Uh, it was. It was just really cool to see. Um. That that's amazing that you went all the way to France and saw a historical a te- yeah a Texas landmark <laughs> you yeah. know um, it was very cool um, I'm just try to see here if I can pull this up here oh here it is um, yeah his name was Colonel uh, Lieutenant Colonel James Earl Rudder Rudder uh, Rudder yeah. yeah, he has, uh, I think Texas A&M, the rudder, uh, th- there's an actual building named after a rudder, yeah. rudder tower. But I thought that was kind of cool. Like you said, you see a uh, a plaque for for Texas. And it, it may, that may not be a historical marker, but... No, that's definitely a historical marker. Yeah, I mean, that's what they, that's what they, I've always seen them as. Um, and... Uh, it I don't was, see a number on it. I didn't. I, I don't remember a number being on there. I just remember the year. No, it was like in '89 um, was when this was. Yeah, like in in November 19th of '89. Yeah, uh, NM has a rudder tower. I wonder if that's the same guy. It should. I mean, I'm guessing it is. I'd imagine. You know. I mean, I feel bad being in in an Aggie, a, a, a long Aggie family tradition, <laughs> and not knowing. My dad's probably. Cringing, cringing, yeah, as he's listening to this. But you Yelling know, at the radio. Uh, but I, I mean, it was just vi- it was very cool. There was tons of museums and and really a lot of stuff to see there. And um, we went to the German cemetery as well. Which I mean, the uh, the American cemetery sits on top of Omaha Beach, and is just this lush green, just beautiful, serene place um, that that. It's just gorgeous. Um, And you go to the Nazi cemetery or the German cemetery, and it's still very beautiful. It's still very lush, but it's just very – it's very – 
uh, it's completely different. There's, everything's done in black um, and not f- white and very. It's it's just a very. It's quite the juxtaposition of of places, but uh, um, it was just very neat to see that um, and to see Omaha Beach at low tide um, was just something that was super impressive. It's just very very neat experience for me to to be able to go and see um because that was just you know to invade a country um and to ev- to 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 do to win was another thing that is just super impressive when you kind of look at it from a space and just the the distance from the beach into the little towns and and just when you kind of start to see like how far you know it takes to like you in you started here in in different areas yeah earl rudder that was him yeah same guy he's an aggie former president yeah of of a and m yeah he um he was uh so there i mean just cool stories about him he so he, with a force of like 50 men, I think, 30 or 40, 50 men, something like that, um, just took over, climbed up 90 feet. And, and it's just like, just when you see the, sh- I mean, you're not talking about a big hill here. Um, you know, like Omaha Beach, I, I mean, not to at all take anything away from it, because that was 200 yards at low tide, which is when they came across, or they came in low tide to the first little i mean and i'm talking about a place that's no taller than the couch we're sitting on um gravel really just kind of a gravel bar um 200 yards from that and then another probably 100 and 150 up to the hill which uh, was another two three hundred foot hill um that that was a feat of itself but to land on on basically no beach, just r- straight rocks basically into the sea, and for you to land there three miles away, make your way to where you needed to get to, and then fire rocket propelled gr- uh, grappling hooks up ninety feet, and for you to climb up ninety feet all while being shot at. And to take over that, and not only take over that, but then to um, defend it against repeated Nazi like counterattacks was, I thought, was super impressive. Um, and just the fact that these guys, like, you just kind of see like what it would take to like get on a boat and just get out of a boat and get on the land and take over the land. That's, I mean, that just doesn't. When you look at history, that just doesn't happen that often, right? It's, it's not a, su- a successful uh, venture, military venture, when you right. when you try to take over land that way. I mean, m- back in the day when you you know in the, the Romans and the and the Greeks and yeah, you're you're talking about a little different thing. You also don't have you know f- bombs, bombs, and bombs and machine guns, machine and, guns and, and um, you know all the things that there were there that would stop them, but. I mean, if you think about somebody trying to invade the United States, uh, it's laughable to think that it would be done today, even, you know? I mean, uh, you're just not going to, it's just, it just was such a, you're just looking at it a vast ocean and say, somebody got on a boat like 40 miles or so across this thing in England and airplanes and then just kind of came over here and took it over and did it you know and i don't know it's just it was a very cool experience to get to be in that um in that place and um it was a lot of fun i had a a lot of fun doing it you know and standing in those kind of places like you get a weird feeling there was a there was a definite weird honor and yeah like just I mean, when you, like I said, when you go up and you see a place that's got an American flag, you know, flying at the same height, if not higher than a French flag in France is kind of weird, you know, Mm -hmm. to see, um, you know, and it's just, it's kind of, it's just, like I said, it was very uh, surreal. It was very cool to see and very humbling to kind of know that um, 
this was something that went on, you know, not hundreds of years ago, but, you know, what, 70 years ago? Yep. 60, 70 years ago, I mean, this occurred, and um, it's just very, it was very cool to see that uh, that we were able to pull something off like that, and um, all the museums were very, it was very kind of, it was very nice to see, like, one of the biggest things they had at the American Cemetery was if you, if this was ever a war of conquest, then let this place mark that, that the only thing that we asked for was a place to bury our dead, you know, which was a famous quote from, a from a, I think, a, a general uh, and you just like you got this little cemetery um, that overlooks Omaha Beach, and of course, of all places, I'm walking, and I'm you know I, I have a public landowner T-shirt, and my wife and I are walking through the cemetery and just kind of like in awe of this, and you know you're just not in a I'm not expecting to see anyone I know um, or anyone who would like I'm not uh, you know I'm just there as a casual spectator of kind of thing and things and. Um, my wife is like, look at this guy. He's got a sh- your shirt on. And I look across, and here's a public landowner guy walking up. And we, like, make the, uh, we recognize we both have the same shirt on. And we're like, dude, BHA at Omaha Beach at the American Cemetery. And so he was uh, a, an American from Colorado, backcountry hunter, and is an angler member, just on vacation. He was a service member. Um, he was in the Army and was just going to visit some friends and had been in I think uh, Belgium and then had come down to Fer- to Paris uh, to France and um, and then was making his way to Germany uh, to go hang out in Berlin for a little while uh, and it was just kind of cool to see a BHA guy in France you know um, but it was a lot of fun had a good time London was really neat as well um, that was another cool place to get to see just huge amount of history there um we tower L- the London Tower was really neat to see because that's just like an old cat. Like Jesus, this is like the shit that has gone on in that building has is crazy, you know. So many wives taken care of, and so stuff. many, so many wives have had their heads cut off there, <laughs> you know. Um, uh, Anne Boleyn, all kind. There was it was just it was really neat to see. Um, London was a different place. It was a, uh, it's a, it's like a city that I like. I've never been in a city. Um, may, New York's probably the closest city um, that has like that kind of vibe. Like it is a city of just like piss and vinegar. You know, it's just there's an energy that exists in that city that you just can't. It just like draw. It's like it's the city. It's like something else has the energy. It's not you. You're not. I'm not excited. I was very excited to be there. I loved being there, but. Um, We all noticed it's just like there's something about that place that has such an energy that is just like craziness, you know. So it was it was a lot of fun. Um, Got to go to Abbey Road, which is kind of neat, you know, recreated the photo and everything. Saw that Beatles album. Um, I hate the Beatles. You don't you don't like the Beatles? I like the Beatles. (laughs) It's weird that they just walked out of the studio and were like, well, let's just walk across the street and take a picture in the middle of traffic. It's a busy-ass road. <laughs> you know, in London, it's busy. Um, but that, it, was, it was a lot of fun. Um, I felt like uh, it, was, it was neat. I got to see some red deer driving between um, London and, uh, not London, but uh, between Normandy and, and Paris. Um, we, were, we were in the car uh, with my aunt and... Uh, it was uh, like, oh, there's some deer. <laughs> so that was kind of cool to see. That's about all the nature I got to do besides the nature museum. So it was a fun trip all in all, but I am I was kind of, uh, I knew it was starting to warm up here, tracking the weather, and was like, oh, <sighs> I need to get out and start fishing. Well, I need to I keep fishing. I, I feel like I've been fishing pretty hard this year, but. Dude, I, I just got my new fly rod yeah so i'm jumping in that deep so what'd you get um so i've been watching uh looking around for something cheap to get into and i found an orvis setup that is a eight weight nine foot eight weight that comes fully rigged out yeah it's their in uh encounter series okay and it's their 
low end, but it's a pretty nice rod. Yeah. It casts really nice. Uh, I got it on my birthday. Uh, the wife surprised me with it. It was a fantastic surprise. Yeah. Always good when your wife knows what to get to you. and Exactly. Um, got that and took it out for my birthday and ca- like cast it a couple times. I was didn't get to go where I wanted to go for my birthday, so I had all the flies that did not go to the area yeah. I was in. Because I bought flies to go to Broken Bow, Oklahoma to go trout fishing and, then, and ended up in a bass lake with trout flies. And then uh, I was like, and I can't. I'm still dealing with jet lag. Yeah, Austin was dealing with bubble guts. <laughs> yeah, he almost died. He almost uh, died. Which He was fortunate he, that he had a... Uh, he sent us that picture of him being, having an IV, and I'm like, you're fortunate that you have a nurse girlfriend who was able to keep your ass alive. <laughs> Otherwise, I feel like you would have been dead. Well, I, I, I called him. Like, someone was telling me the other day, like, they were like, do you hear about this Ebola outbreak with lettuce? Oh. And I was like... Oh my God! Grinch better that's, not have ate any lettuce. Right, like Grinch that's ate why lettuce, you don't eat lettuce. That's why you don't eat rabbit food. Yeah. But exactly. <laughs> not, luckily, he did not have a a boy, a he, boy and he was doing fine. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> now, it took it, that shit took him down. It yeah, was, no, for sure. Like in, anything that like I've seen that man hunt and fish in some pretty bad. Brutal. Like times, yeah, you know, like, like I've been out with Pepto Bismol and and me, like, you know, yeah. chugging it while you're out there in the boat and stuff like that, it's and just like, hoping, mm. hoping you don't sneeze too hard. Hopefully, yeah. But you're still out fishing. Like, Hopefully, I, I don't have to poop in front of my friends yeah. <laughs> over the boat. But 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 I'm fishing. I'm not gonna get I'm that. Going. Up. But when when you have to be like, dude, there ain't no I'm way. I'm not going. Nope. Like. Nope. Mm mm. Mm mm. That's bad. Yeah, you know it's you know it's bad. You know it's serious. It's for reals. Yeah, it's for reals. <laughs> I feel like what is it, just like a, like four days ago he just got back on his feet. Yeah, no, I, I think he's still like a little shaky. And I've been back from Paris for three weeks now. Yeah, he's he's, you know, two weeks maybe three weeks. I don't know. And what was it? Last weekend was my birthday. Yeah. So two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, he's he was pretty bad. Like he's for, he was down for the count. I mean, when you need an IV. You, yeah, th- things were things were bad. I just would like to have been a fly on that wall as he's just like dying, and Lauren's like, "Dude, like, there's You're a not pussy. a well that, but <laughs> no doubt that I'm I'm guessing Lauren probably had to talk his ass into like that." Like, she was probably like, dude, you're not doing well. You need, you know, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm a shot of whiskey and gonna, take a warm yeah. bath. <laughs> I'm going to drink some whiskey and get in a warm bath. In, in, some, in, in, a, in a bubble bath. <laughs> in a bubble bath. I'll be fun. Uh, and so I would have liked to have seen the amount of coaxing that it took for him. And then the point where he was like, he broke. Like, he just was like, do what you need to do to me to get me well. <laughs> I don't care anymore. I don't care anymore. Put the needles in me. Um, but yeah, so you were you you had a whole arsenal of of trout flies, and you were like, well, <laughs> I have no trout to fish. Well, and like so, I you know I went camping with my family, which was amazing. I love camping with my family. Yeah. I took you know my daughter and wife and. We actually found a really cool place. If anyone's looking for a good state park around the Dallas Fort Worth area, went to Cooper Lake, oh, near yeah. Sulphur Springs, mm-hmm. and uh, we went to that state park, and it was awesome. It, yeah. I mean, the, that state park was fantastic. It was about two hours outside of the DFW area from yep. from my house in Arlington, and uh, you know we drove out there, and we're basically just camping. I didn't think I was going to have much time to fish or whatever. But then I was like, I'm going to run over this little spot. And I took I took the daughter with me and her fishing rod. And I cast it out a couple times. And there's a bunch of gar in there. And I was like, ooh. You know. Uh, maybe I'll get one of these. So I kept on like, you know, spot casting them. You know, I'd yeah. see them. I'd cast them in front of their face and couldn't get them. And I was like, and I didn't take any other flies with me yeah. like i just took the one i tied on a fly at the camp i was like i'm gonna run out here i just want to feel this rod. i, I just, just want to cast it cast it 
you know, like, that's all I was doing. I was like, I don't have the flies for it. And, uh, uh, didn't get a single hit. And I was like, you know what? Like, Braley was with me and cast out a couple times for her. And she had a bobber with a little, little worm on it, a little plastic worm. And she wasn't getting anything. And she, of course, like, every little kid, when you're out fishing, she reeled it in and got caught. Oh, yeah, hung on up. On something. Yeah. So she was hung up and. I had to break a line off, and we lost <laughs> we lost her whole setup yeah. on there and her little Zepco, and so I was like, all right, we're done here. So, you know, we packed it in. I was like, I'm going to go back later on. So we did a couple other things at the campsite and all that stuff, and, and I was like, I'm going to go back with all my flies, and I'm going I'm, I'm to try to get one of those gar, because I yeah. want a gar off of it. I get back there, and that apparently is when everybody decided where that spot was was, the was to be there. And so there, were, like all the spots I wanted to be sitting in, there's already people already hanging out. And so I cast a little bit more in the spot that was definitely not, you know, holding fish in it, and hung out there for a while. And got you know got used to the rod a lot, and went over to another spot that. uh no one was at. In fact, I watched a lot of guys leaving there empty-handed with no fish. So, watched a couple of boats go through there and scan and nothing. Nothing. So, but you know, I used it as more of an opportunity just to, you know, I'm not a fly fisherman. So, I thought. But I'd, you are now. Yo, know, totally. I mean, you I, are now. I, I already tied a fly. You did tie a fly today. I tied a fly today. So now I am a full-on hundred like percent. Badass fly like, fisherman. Straight up. Never caught a fish. Well, I caught that you did small. Catch. Yeah. That was like not even as big as my palm. So. But I caught a fish, tied a fly, and owned a fly rod. So you're I'm hundred percent a badass fly fisherman. You're hundred percent invested in fly fishing. Yes. Which I think is good because it's a lot of fun. Well, I'm with you. I still have yet to catch anything on a fly rod. Well, I think the plan is, so the plan will be that I'm going to go down to the Brazos and they go tell waters, get them set me up for yeah. every every fly I possibly need to catch a catch, gar. Yeah. And I'm going to catch a gar on the fly. That's what my goal yeah. is. And if I can catch a bass and a gar on the fly, then I pretty much am good. Oh, yeah. I've already caught trout on a fly. Like I mean, that's I feel like you've done the hard thing already. Like, pluch. yeah, trout. I mean, pff, who can, who, yeah, been there, done that. Got don't the care. Like largemouth bass and a gar. Dude, I can't imagine a largemouth bass on a go on a fly rod. That's probably insane. Yeah, I'm ready for it. Yeah, that's what I'm going after. Yeah, I don't blame you. That's I'm, what I want to do. Cause I'm from Texas and I hunt. Yeah, largemouth bass and gar. Yeah. I see. I'm the. I'm. I'm just hard up on crappie like a fucking meth head. No, no. I agree with the crappie. I really do. Yeah. I just can't get out of my. I can't. Like I can't stop doing it. Like I haven't had a day yet where like I feel like it's one of those things that until I have like a day where I'm like, all right, I caught like 40 fish or 30 fish or 20 fish or like 10 fish. I'm not gonna be happy until I I get one of those days under my belt and then I'll be like alright maybe it's time to like start working some soft plastics or some crankbaits or some you know stuff that I do yeah not anymore I'm a fly fisherman you are a fly fisherman there's no other fishing besides fly fishing you're now. just like all that's all that like you all those other guys are way below me <laughs> like you were like so far below yeah, me yeah you're just like ah oh. a bobber it's a strike indicator it's a strike indicator you idiot Oh my god. It's amazing how quickly it happens too. Like as soon as you get fly rod equipment you're like <laughs> fucking st- conventional tackle idiots. It's like it's like it's like bow hunting like you're like, "Oh, you shot that with a rifle?" Ugh. So, uh, doesn't even count. Was it hand <laughs> was it hand fed before well, the Did you tie it up? <laughs> yeah, did you, did you have it on a leash before you shot it? Like you know, fuck all that. that yeah. That's a bunch of bullshit, dude. Yeah. Like I will take anything any way I get. Now, the fact that I'm bit with the f- the sickness of fly fishing is legit. Yeah. You know. I no, t- I mean, like I I enjoy all types of fishing. Like you know, and I've, I've told you this before. Like my favorite fishing like 
schedule guess you call it is we used to go out on the bass boat first thing in the morning we would bass fish hardcore like yeah just throwing all kinds of stuff running from cove to cove trying to chase the bass find them you know striper large mouth all that kind of stuff like just trying to find them get them we catch them once once the afternoon would start coming up and the sun was straight up in the air you could see through the water better yeah so then we'd start bow fishing and we'd bow fish for a while and then when the sun started going down you couldn't bow fish as well during the middle of the day as as good we go back to bass fishing yeah and the night would come down and we would bring out the lights bow fish a little bit more in dark and then we would find a cove and catfish and crappie fish yeah. and bobbers at night with a green light in the water and drink beer and get wasted. Yeah. And catch fish and then fall asleep on the deck of the boat and then wake up in the morning and then drive in back to the docks and the boat ramp. Get and breakfast. Get breakfast <laughs> and then go home. You yeah. know, like, and that was like the best fishing day ever because, I mean, the That's a next long day. the next day, like once you got home, you were like, "Oh my god!" Like I'm dead. You're probably sunburned. All get out. Oh my god, I can't uh, even imagine. My wife still to this day does not forgive me for how sunburned I got on those days. Like uh, yelling at me, like tops of my feet blistered and, and stuff. Just not being able to sit down. Oh yeah, and. Uh, you know, dehydrated, probably didn't drink enough water because we were drinking nothing but beer at night. Yeah. But, you know, it was fantastic. I mean, that was... But we used every type of fishing you just did that it we all. had. You know, like we had bobbers, saw plastic. Yeah. And we didn't do back then is fly fishing until this year. Now, Hopefully next time we do it, you yeah. know. Go out and... Bring the fly out. Exactly. Fly rod. Right. Yeah, that's when I'm 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 super excited about going out there. I'm I'm hoping that I can get out on the main lake with a kayak and um start doing a little bit of fly fishing, you know. And chasing crappie in the docks, you know. Dude, there's nothing better. That we we posted up on the website the uh crappie cake. You know, my wife oh. made those crappie yeah. cakes, put that recipe up on the website. And um uh, that's why I say there's nothing wrong with being obsessed, obsessed with crappie because mm-hmm. crappie are delicious. Yeah. You know, so bass, I, I'll i eat bass. I love bass. You know, yeah. I do. I like catfish. You know, I'll eat almost any type of fish. But crappie are honestly really delicious. They're so good. I've got, so, I'm so interested in, that's why I'm like, I'm, you know, I'm tired of catching onesie twosies. Onesie twosies. That's what it sucks because I'll go out and catch two fish and. One uh, fish, blue fish, red fish. Yeah, is that a book? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a Dr. Seuss book. <laughs> oh, that is a Dr. Seuss book. You're right. It's been a long time since I've been a kid. I I own one. I bet you do. <laughs> you know, being a dad gives you the ability to kind of go back in time. Sometimes I'm sure. But like, oh, you know what? Check this out. I like me some Dr. Seuss. Yeah, you could do all kinds of. Weird stuff and just be like, I'm a dad. What's yeah, up? I'm a dad. Like, what do you say something? Of course, I can watch Moana. Exactly. That's what's going on back there <laughs> right now. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> hey, babe, I keep on hearing it in the mic or in my headphones. I'm pretty sure that you can hear it. Yeah. The girls are back there watching Moana. Yep. Uh, I was actually a little upset. I didn't get to watch Moana. <laughs> yeah. I get, hey, you know what? We can. This, we, we can just hit stop right now and. <laughs> Go back there and be like, all right, everybody, we're watching Moana 2. Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> Electric bo- <laughs> Um, But, yeah, I'm um, I'm straight obsessed. I mean, like I said, I would go out right now if we just maybe, you know. Well, I think tomorrow. Uh, we should go tomorrow. We got some stuff in the morning. I'm going to probably yeah. work out in the morning, do a bike ride, maybe a way to pack hike. And then... Uh, I get it. And then uh, once the girls don't want to go out in the middle of the... Middle of the day? Day, maybe go hit a lake with some fly fishing. Are we going to take the kayaks or are we just going to go bank fish? I don't know. I'm, I'm pumped for bank fishing. Me too. Like, a Monday off work. 
on a lake. On a lake. Being, like, I'm not uh, going to deal with all the dude bras and uh-huh. wakeboarding boats and jet skis. <laughs> the dude bras. <laughs> Yeah, no, I wouldn't either, man. The, um, the worst thing about being on a lake is the dude bras. Oh. I mean, like, you're trying to fish a spot, and, like, you get, like, guys that are, you know, on jet skis or wakeboarding boats, and they, they see you, and they're like, like, oh, I'm not going to go over there. Like, I really want to go over there, but that dude's fishing. Yeah. I'm cool with that. Like, no. leave that guy alone. And you got the guy that's, like, on a jet ski, and he rolls by you, and he, like, gives you a look like... I'm the badass motherfucker on the jet ski, yeah. and you're like, and you're like, dude, I'm about to cast and hit you right in the I eye. I hope I like, like you know, I can hit you right, like, you yeah, and like, uh, I can make this happen. <laughs> like, I'm a pretty good caster, like, and I'm using braid, so it ain't breaking. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna be gone, dude. You're gonna be, uh, it's gonna rip out of your skin before it <laughs> breaks the line. Um, yeah, I had a bunch of idiots last year. I was fishing with a buddy up underneath. Um, like a big bridge and uh so i was up underneath the bridge um fishing pylons right Mm -hmm. and uh these fucking idiot skiers just skiing like right on the outside of the bridge i'm talking like five six four four five six feet right off the bridge just moving right up and down the bridge and i'm like are you kidding me right now like so of course we're getting like tossed around on our kayaks because of that and I'm anchored down and I'm like oh god it's slinging me around into pylons and everything we're just like really this is what you're going to do like right here like you have a whole lake you can go anywhere you want I am up underneath a bridge five feet off the bank and you're going to be right up on me and yeah I don't I'm I'm cool with going and hitting some uh hitting some uh some bank fishing spots we just yeah. gotta figure out where we're gonna go. Yeah. Levon is on fire supposedly with crappie, but according to the fishing forums, the fishing forums, the fishing forums, the fishing uh, those the fishing would never tabloids. Lie to you. Oh, they don't lie. No, they're always telling you. You just call them a tabloid. Like I don't know how much yeah. I would uh, like listen to a tabloid. Last time I looked at a tabloid, they were talking about like the aliens were in Elvis and he was back. Dude, as the o- according the to Men in Black, it's the only legitimate news that's out there. Will Smith does know what he's talking about. I mean, hundred percent. More importantly, Tommy Lee Jones knows what he's talking about. I mean, think about all the people that Tommy Lee Jones has played. It's undeniable. I think you have a point. I mean, when you're right, you're right, bro. <laughs> I mean, the evidence is stacking up. The evidence is stacking up. <laughs> Case closed. The defense rests. Well. Well, I think uh, we've said it all. We're going to go do some fishing. Yep. Um, we're back. There's podcasts. We're back with a bang now. We're back with a bang now. So we apologize for the the, the two-week two week layoff. Um, and... But uh, we're here, and expect some cool things coming out. I know in a couple of weeks we're going to talk to Bighorn Society, which I'm super excited about. Yep. Uh, we're going to talk to Bo Beasley from Texas Fly Fishing Festival. Yep. Uh, and then there's there's some other stuff happening too. Who knows what else could happen? You never know what's going to happen. We do stuff. We do stuff, and we do things, and we do it for you and ourselves. Let's be honest. We like doing this. It's fun. Yep. Well, thanks for listening, guys. Check out our website, stormwatercreek.com. We got cool stuff up there to buy if you want to help support us. We got a few hats left. We got some hats. We got a lot of stickers left. Get a sticker. Sticking on something. That's why they, I'm pretty sure that's why they call them stickers. Because you can stick them on things. Cue music. (laughs) (laughs) And it's over. (laughs) 